only than the one and only King Julian, the island of Madagascar has a number of interesting animals that call its dense forest and shorelines home. Probably the most unique of these animals, however, is the carnivorous fossa, which looks like a cross between a mountain cat, dog, and possibly even a mongoose. But what do we know about the fossa besides the fact that it's the largest carnivorous mammal and should most definitely not be messed with? Well, whether you're in the midst of planning our next trip to Madagascar or just want to know as much as possible about the strange looking creature, stay right where you are, as we're about to explore some fun facts about the intriguing fossa species. So strap yourselves in and get ready for a bumpy ride as things are about to get interesting. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as well as hit the post notification bell so you don't miss anything else from us recognizing the fossa. By far the largest of any other carnivorous mammal that calls the island of Madagascar its home, the fossa can reach nearly six feet in length, with half of that due to their long curving tails. As mentioned earlier, they look like a strange inbreeding experience involving a mountain cat, dog, and mongoose, which has produced a truly cutesy appearance that tends to steal the hearts of passersby. This adorable look they have going for them is pretty misleading, though, as there are wild animals which shouldn't be played with, unless you're okay with the risk of losing a limb or two. The bodies of fossa are often slender with muscular limbs, perfect for quick bursts of energy and leaping onto prey. Their short reddish-brown coat looks soft and sleek to the touch, and can help the animal move through the forest with little to no air resistance dragging them back. And if anybody were to designate their specific facial features to animals of the like, they'd probably see the fossa as the small head of a cat, short muzzle of a dog, and rounded ears of a mongoose, making it truly a Frankenstein of Madagascar. The strangest name out there. The scientific name for the fossa is Cryptoproctopharynx, which actually tells us quite a lot about the mammal right there. The genus name Cryptoprocta is inspired by how its anus is actually concealed by what some would call an anal pouch of sorts. Breaking the genus name down from its Greek origins, we discovered that crypto is actually Greek for hidden, while procta is Greek for anus. In other words, directly translated, the scientific name for the genus of the species is none other than hidden anus, which we're sure the fossa wouldn't be too impressed with if it knew. Ferrix, on the other hand, follows up its genus designation and hints at the exaggerated ferocity of the carnivorous animal. We say exaggerated, as it was prior to study believed that the fossa was a devil of a creature. And while it can still cause a quite a bit of damage to somebody or something it provokes, this is the only instance in which the mammal shows its so-called ferocity. That being said, the name has ended up sticking, and we now know the fossa as the ferocious hidden anus. Quite a name, right? They're placed in the food chain. As carnivorous animals, fossa are known to hunt during the day and night, and they also have no particular reference when it comes to a hunting style, mixing it up by sometimes attacking prey from the ground, while other times waiting for prey to pass underneath them, and then attacking from a surrounding tree. They are considered to be the top predator on the island of Madagascar, and thus don't really fall to too many other creatures. When it comes to their diet, it's mostly made up of lemurs like King Julian, who the fossa appear to prefer above all others. Good thing to know too, because Madagascar is absolutely full of them. And that being said, the fossa also eats a selection of other meats, which includes but are not limited to do smaller animals, fish, lizards, birds, frogs, and even insects. Is there anything the fossa won't eat? Well, plants are pretty much off the menu, but when it comes to meat, it looks like they're not too picky about what they put in their mouth. A complicated history of classification. Because the fossa looks so particular, scientists have had problems in order to identify the animal in the past. We know that they're mammals because they procreate in the same manner that each and every mammal in the animal kingdom does. But when it comes to more specific designation, things tend to get a bit more complicated. You see, the fossa have features in common with three general groups of animals. The first animal of carnivores that it's been said to connected to is the herbicide, such as mongooses, mostly because of the rounded ears. The second is the vervarade, like civets and other relatives, while the third is felidae, otherwise known as cats. Recent molecular studies, on the other hand, have ended up placing the fossa in the euphuride family. This is a group that is known to primarily consist with the mangalese carnivores. The members of this family are thought to have descended from mongoose-like ancestors, which came down to colonize Madagascar around 20 million years ago, which would explain the mongoose appearance and that the fossa share in common with one another. Nature's own introverts. When it comes to personality, fossas are mostly solitary animals, with the exception of the mothers and their young, as well as brief pairing during the breeding period. They do have to get together every now and again to be able to keep the species going strong after all. The home ranges of these small, solitary creatures are often considered to be as large as four kilometers squared, which means that situations often arise when these home ranges cross
Cross and Fossa come into contact with one another. There's always exceptions to the rules of nature, of course, one of which was recorded back in 2009, when scientists actually observed three male Fossas cooperatively hunting a Sifka for at least 45 minutes. After catching the prey, the three Fossas actually shared it, and when they were done eating, they went on their merry way. But why would solitary creatures hunt in packs? Well, the scientists observing this phenomenon believed that cooperative hunting would have been necessary for the Fossa to take down the bigger lemurs in the past. In other words, this exception was nothing more than the reminder of past hunting methods. Or maybe Fossa, like solitary humans, also need some attention in group activities every once in a while. Communication through scent and smell. Like many other mammals, both male and female communicate through their scent glands. They use the liquid and pheromones they secrete from the glands on their chest and under the bases of their tails to mark their territory. Fossas usually mark rocks, trees, and even the ground to communicate and keep track of each other. They're even able to know a little bit about what the marking fossa was feeling when leaving a scent behind. Their glands tend to release a pungent smell when the animal is either irritated or frightened, after all. So, when another fossa comes across the scent, it's clear that there's some irritant or danger in the vicinity, causing the fossa to be on guard. The sound of a fossa. Smell isn't enough to keep track of and find one another during mating season. So, what fossa have been witness to is to being able to make whole separate kinds of sounds in an effort to attract other members of the species during this special time. Females will often mew and attract males, while males surprisingly sigh when they have found a receptive female and yowl when competing with another for that female's attention. There's even case studies done where fossa will use their vocalizations outside of mating season, but it must be said that the majority of vocalizations have to do with the attraction of repulsion of others. Quite a strange song and dance, but definitely useful for the continuation of the species. They're brilliant climbers. As previously mentioned earlier, fossa will often choose to leap onto their prey from treetops above, which means that they have to be agile climbers. And this is needed indeed. In fact, because of their long slender tails, which often account for nearly half of their strength, the fossa are able to balance better than the world's greatest tightrope walker. They also do have semi-retractable claws and flexible ankles, which allow them to climb up and down trees head first. It does need to be said that the fossa walks flat-footed on the soles of its paws, which is a method of locomotion known as plantigrade shared by other mammals like bears. This gives the fossa extra balance and stability when leaping from branch to branch, allowing them to make it across the treetops like they were spending across the jungle floor. Their home. Because fossa are such agile climbers, they do tend to claim and mark territory in the dense forest of Madagascar. This allows them to easily get the better of their prey, who are often slowed by such dense vegetation. It also needs to be said that although their population densities of the fossa are usually quite low, they can often be found at elevations above 2,000 meters square. So, if you want to see one for yourself, good luck searching. The uniqueness of the female fossa. Something that sets the female fossa apart from their male counterpart is their ability to undergo a strange developmental stage during adolescence known as transient masculinization. This development stage is unique to the female fossa and involves the development of a spiky clitoris that tends to resemble the penis of the male. Her underbelly also tends to secrete an orange liquid, which is also used usually only seen in males of the species. After adolescence, the female fossa loses these indicators of transient masculinization, and scientists to this day are still trying to figure out what the purpose of that is. The prevailing idea at the moment is that such features protect the adolescent female fossa from being sexually harassed by males of the species. Their unusual mating system. Lastly, the mating ritual of a fossa is incredibly unique. The female will climb to the top of a tree, below which the male will congregate and compete for mating rights. Over the next week, she'll choose to mate with several of these suitors, with bouts of copulation sometimes lasting as long as several hours. Finally, once the female is done, another will occupy the same mating site with the process starting all over again. So, did you learn anything new about this incredible conomivore? Feel free to let us know in the comment section down below.